large Hezbollah forces are on the move with an unprecedented deployment in Dahia and Beirut. Meanwhile, the IDF has uncovered a treasure trove of intelligence information inside the Shifa Medical Center in the Gaza Strip as Israel announces that the day after the war is already here. I'm Yair Pinto and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel in this 166th day of the war against Hamas and Hezbollah. In Lebanon, where the Iranian-backed terrorist group Hezbollah has deployed a massive force in the Daria district, its main stronghold in the capital city of Beirut, it is not immediately clear what the purpose of this deployment. However, the Lebanese newspaper El Akbar, which is affiliated with Hezbollah, reported today that a spy network that operated from Israel was uncovered in Lebanon. According to the report, two people were arrested after they allegedly provided Israel with information about areas in Lebanon, including Beirut. It is important to understand that Hezbollah has built infrastructure for the production and storage of weapons and ammunition in the heart of civilian population centers in southern Lebanon. This includes large cities like Beirut and also the densely populated Beka Valley region. Hezbollah does this because they want to use these civilians as human shields, similar to Hamas. However, the IDF does not allow this to get in the way of attacking Hezbollah infrastructure using precision guided weapons and intelligence. This allows the destruction of Hezbollah ammunition depots without harming civilians. We know it's effective because we can see that after an IDF strike on a target, there are always many secondary explosions from all the Hezbollah rockets and bombs that were there when Israel's missiles hit the building. Before continuing with the news from the Gaza Strip, I'd like to ask you to please take a second and hit that subscribe button so that you can become part of the team sharing the truth about what is going on in Israel. In Gaza, specifically Gaza City, we are on the third day of the IDF operation at Shifa Hospital. So far, about 350 individuals that IDF intelligence knows for certain are members of the Hamas or Palestinian Islamic Jihad terrorist organizations have been captured. After all their tough talk, most of them wisely surrendered voluntarily rather than try and fight or hide from the IDF. An entire corridor in the hospital is now being used as a temporary detention facility for the Shin Bet as they carry out field interrogations of these terrorists in order to quickly extract intelligence from them. One Islamic Jihad terrorist admitted to the Shin Bet that we are a unit of the rocket formation. We left Shifa, we shot on Sderot and we returned to Shifa because we understood that it was a safe area. From the investigations of the terrorists, the IDF obtained intelligence that was acted upon immediately. Several Air Force strikes, as well as raids by ground forces in the last two days were carried out thanks to intelligence that came from the terrorists in Shifa. An IDF source said that we are sitting on a gold mine of knowledge. However, that's not the treasure I'm talking about. But before I tell you about that, let's take a look at how the IDF entered Shifa, because the details of this operation will be studied at military colleges all over the world for years to come, just like the IDF's rescue of Israeli hostages at Entebbe in 1976. The naval commandos from the Shayette 13 moving first, arriving on top of armored vehicles. That took them about 15 minutes to travel from the point of departure to the hospital gates without any resistance on the way. Dozens of terrorists have admitted to the interrogators that we were surprised. We did not think that the IDF would return to Shifa. And at the very least, we thought that we would have enough advance warning to escape in time. But they did not, because about 20 minutes after the commandos deployed, tanks and armored vehicles from the 401st Brigade were in position around the perimeter of the hospital. 
This prevented the terrorists inside the hospital from escaping and it also prevented terrorists outside the area from trying to help them. This lightning quick development allowed the IDF to minimize risk to the civilians inside the hospital, which was a critical element in the overall success of the operation. And now I will tell you about the treasure the IDF found. In addition to the individual's intelligence collected and the removal of so many terrorists from the battlefield, the IDF also found 11 million shekels in cash hidden in the hospital's dining room for the purpose of transferring payments to Hamas terrorists inside the hospital. This money was meant for the welfare of Gazan civilian population, and now that's where it will go. Meanwhile, the 13th Fleet Commandos and the 401st Brigade's combat team continued to operate on the scene while avoiding to harm civilians, patients, medical teams, and medical equipment. However, 50 terrorists who decided not to surrender to the IDF have been eliminated in exchanges of fire with IDF troops in and around the hospital in the last 24 hours. The Air Force has given support to ground units and together they have cooperated to eliminate many terrorists. Elsewhere, the combat team of the 7th Brigade launched a divisional operation in the northern part of Khan Yunis in the El Karara region. These soldiers are working to mop up the remnants of the terrorist infrastructure in the city and have eliminated several terrorists who attempted to attack them in the last 24 hours. Large quantities of weapons and ammunition have also been captured and launch pads for firing rockets into Israel have also been destroyed. Even as these mopping up operations continue, plans are already in motion for the day after the day after this war in Gaza concludes. Reports have surfaced that Israeli officials are conducting back-channel talks with the leaders of Fatah-affiliated clans in the Gaza Strip. High-level diplomacy is also taking place between Israel and Egypt, Qatar, and other countries which have influence in Gaza. The goal of these talks is to build support for factions which do not have ties to Hamas, including the prominent Palestinian businessman Mashar Masri. Remember that name because he or someone like him who does not want to kill Israelis will soon be running Gaza, whether Hamas and its Iranian supporters like it or not. Media reports also say that humanitarian aid will soon enter the Gaza Strip by sea and land. It will be distributed by factions that will then be given authority to govern and backed by the security forces that will be deployed in the region by wealthy Arab governments. But first, Hamas must be completely crushed and defeated so that it cannot re-emerge to threaten Israel ever again. However, this will create a power vacuum that must quickly be filled or the situation, which is already very difficult, will become impossible. In conclusion, I would once again ask you to please help us spread the truth by sharing our videos on YouTube, subscribing to this channel and following us on social media. Speaking of videos, on Saturday, the newest episode of my series, My State, will be released and we will talk about the silent war sector in Judea and Samaria. Thank you for continuing to spread the truth with us and thank you for praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem together we will win this war. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.